Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today uh, for our final workshop of the Fall 2020 Undergraduate Workshop Series. My name is Leslie Silva. I'm a career counselor here at the college, I'm specifically charged with helping you all um, land internships, research opportunities, and full-time jobs when you graduate. Um, so today, um, to end the series, we're going to be talking about mostly networking and what you all can do over the holiday break um, in regards to professional development. So you can really hit the ground running in January um, and search for internships and, and full-time jobs. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you all now. One moment here. Okay. Start from the beginning here. All right, so what can you be doing over the holiday break? Um, so here's just a general overview of what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, rest, right? You guys work really, really hard during the semester, so I don't want you just working, working, working over the break, definitely want you to get some rest. Um, updating your resume and what does that look like and how you can be doing that every at the end of every semester. I'm gonna talk a little bit about LinkedIn, both building your LinkedIn presence, what should be on your profile, um, but also how to use your LinkedIn to network. And then just gonna touch a little bit on searching for internships, um, which is also applicable to full-time jobs. So for starters, yes, please get some rest. It's an order. Um, so you do things that, that bring you joy. Uh, and these are some of my go-tos. So binge watching bad 90s and early 2000s TV shows. I just finished Dawson's Creek in an embarrassingly short period of time. Um, and now I've moved on to One Tree Hill. Uh, this is something that brings me joy. Catching up with friends and family safely. Um, I wanna emphasize safely here. Uh, we're in a very unique situation, um, but it's still important to, to see people, um, whether that be you know mostly virtual, just doing it as safely as possible. Cooking and eating good food. For Thanksgiving this year, I made a huge lasagna and ate way too much of it, but it was awesome. Um, reading, uh, things like meditating. There's so many um, like short YouTube videos out there with like breathing exercises and, and mindfulness. Um, and then the last thing for me is taking hikes. Again, making sure you're doing that as safely as possible right now. But really, you guys work really, really hard. Your curriculum is super challenging. Getting rest is important. Um, but now we're going to talk a little bit about the things that you can do in relation to professional development. So I would recommend um, at the end of every semester, updating your master resume. Um, so I keep a running Google Doc of my master resume, which is, you know, pages long. So at the end of each semester, I'm constantly adding, you know, workshops that I've presented at, classes I've presented to, resources I've created for you all, um, anything related to my job and things that I've done. So in the future, you know, years from now, or whenever I'm looking for a job, I don't have to remember, oh my God, what was that thing I did in fall 2019? Because I'm constantly updating that long master resume I have. Um, that said, I never submit my master resume. I submit the most relevant one page version of my resume. So pulling from that master resume. Um, so for you all, what this might look like updating that master resume would be adding relevant projects from the semester, courses you took, skills, especially thinking technical skills that you've gained this semester, adding those to your resume. Um, I would recommend scheduling an appointment to review it through Handshake with, with myself, um, with Mike Madera or Katie Snap at the Career Center. So, you know, our office will be closed from the 24th until the 4th, um, but then we're going to reopen and you can meet with us virtually before your semester starts. And I would recommend doing so, so that when you, you know, your semester starts, you guys get really busy, like review your resume beforehand, come talk about the career fair before the semester starts, so you can really hit the ground running. There are resume samples for you all on TU Portal. So if you go to TU Portal, go to the College of Engineering tab, under advising, there is a career services section with, um, I, I believe about five or six sample resumes there for you. Uh, the holidays can be a really good time to connect with people in your network, um, so I recommend doing so. And, you know, what is a network? Um, your network is an association of individuals having a common interest formed to provide mutual assistance and helpful information. So 
I'm part of your network. Your professors are part of your network. Your classmates, peers are part of your network. People in your student organizations are part of your network. Your friends, your family, um, community leaders, you know, maybe you're a part of a church group or a mosque, synagogue, et cetera. Um, all of those people are a part of your network and your network can really help you um, definitely during challenging times. Um, but also, you know, I, and I'll give you a good story about this. I had a student who went to her little sister's basketball game and ended up sitting with the mother of her little sister's friend. And they started just chatting casually. And she realized this, this woman was an engineer uh, and they started talking about engineering and she uh, told the student to send her her resume uh, so she could see if there were any internship opportunities at her company. This was like, a really random occurrence. Um, and, and that's kind of why it's important to be prepared to talk about yourself and to talk about your goals because you never know when you're gonna be in a situation where someone could connect you with something. So networking is much less official than I think students think. Like I think students think, oh, I'm gonna to go to this you know, very specific networking event. And the truth is we can be networking at any moment in our lives. Um, so how should you think about networking? It's a skill. You know, you guys learn AutoCAD and MATLAB and C and Java. Networking is a skill. Um, and it's something that you have to practice to get better at. It's a long-term engagement with many different people. It's a way to develop the support you need in a challenging time. So I'll give you the example of, of my husband who um, he left his job at a school for a number of reasons and he was going back into the district this year um, to the school district and when he was in the application process he didn't just apply online he reached out to teachers he knew at schools he would be interested in working at and that's how he was able to land an interview at the school that he's currently at now so yes like his qualifications got him there he has a good resume he interviewed well but the way he got that interview was through networking um, it's a method for gaining insight and information to be the best prepared candidate. And I'm going to talk about this and how it relates to informational interviewing. Um, and it's also just a method for improving your chances of success. What does networking look like? Um, attending in events in person is definitely one way. Obviously, that's not happening right now. Um, but I really think that students often think like that's the only way that networking happens and it's simply not true. Um, connecting with faculty and guest speakers in your classes. So, you know, if you attend a lecture uh, and somebody has come to present to your class and the lecture was interesting, go up at the end, thank them for their time and ask if you can exchange contact information. You then wanna reach out to that person, whether it's LinkedIn or email or however they tell you to, to, to start building that relationship. Um, it can be getting to know colleagues at your job or internship. It can be casual conversations with people in your community who you know. It can be conducting informational interviews, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later in this pre presentation. Um, and it can also be connecting with alumni and industry professionals on LinkedIn. So I do wanna talk to you all a little bit about LinkedIn specifically, because it's a really good way for you to network with people you know and maintain those relationships, but also to start connecting with people in your industry who you don't know. So the power of LinkedIn, and this is, forgive me, I need to update this. These, this data is from 2018-ish, um, but currently over 560 million users. It can be a good way to organize your job search. I would argue that at this point, over 90% of company recruiters use LinkedIn daily. It's essentially like a dating site for recruiters. Um, it's a good tool for personal branding. And especially in today's you know, society, when people are on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and all that stuff, LinkedIn is really a place for you to build your professional profile and to give companies um, something good to see. Uh, and, and it's a good branding tool in that way. Well over 26 million companies are on there at this point. And it's a good way to cultivate your network and build relationships. But you can't just have like an empty LinkedIn profile or people are going to think you are a bot. Um, so some of the, the like must haves on your LinkedIn, you need a picture. Um, you can't go to the career center right now to get a picture taken like a, a headshot, but you will be able to in the future. Otherwise, you just want it to be as professional as possible. So you'll see here like I'm wearing a suit and a nice shirt um, only from like, you know, chest up 
if your only option is to have somebody take this picture for you or even a selfie, like I've seen good pictures being taken that way. Um, so that's something like if, if you want any help with like, hey, Leslie, could you check out this picture? What do you think? Like, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, this is my headline. So career counselor at Temple University higher education, advocate for equitable education. So you guys want to have your current major because to an employer, they wanna know, you know, what is your concentration? So something like mechanical engineering student at Temple University. You might list a current job position. It, it could be related to engineering, that's ideal, but it might not be and, and that's okay. You're, you guys are in college right now. You're not in the professional world yet, so that's okay. Um, and then you could have an additional position, title, goal, industry. So, you know, career counselor at Temple, that's my position. Um, higher education is the industry I work in. And then that's something that I'm passionate about. Um, so there's not like a one size fits all, but this is essentially how you want to present yourself. You want to have a summary. It should be in a brief intro about who you are or what you're passionate about. You want to consider your audience and your industry. Like if you are set and working in like the automotive industry, your summary should mention that. Um, it's an opportunity to highlight your accomplishments. So sometimes people will actually have like bulleted um, achievements on their LinkedIn, like in their summary. I don't, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to or that you have to. Um, but these should be relatively short. So this is um, my summary here. With a background in professional clinical counseling, I thrive off of making connections with people and helping prepare students to embark on their professional journeys. My favorite thing about working with students as a career counselor is seeing a shift in their confidence. That moment when they realize they have the skills and the drive to shape their own future, that's what it's all about. I'm thrilled to be working at my alma mater, Temple University. So it's very short. I talk a little bit about why I'm passionate about career counseling. Um, but again, super duper short. So this does not have to take you a lot of time. It's not super involved. You just want to have something in your summary. Um, your experience and skills section, and I'm sorry, this image is covering some of my text here, um, but you want to fill out your experience and skill section as fully as possible. Um, especially with your skills, keep in mind that you, you'll notice in past presentations, you've probably attended of mine or of Mike's, we recommend only listing hard skills on your resume. So that's things like MATLAB, CAD, Excel, languages you speak. You don't wanna list soft skills in your skill section on your resume. Things like collaboration, teamwork, problem solving. But on your LinkedIn, you can list as many of those things as you want because there is no space limit. Um, it's a place for employers to go and get additional information about you. Um, as far as your experience section goes, try to list at least two experiences and remember that it can be volunteer experience, part-time stuff, full-time stuff, um, internships, research, like it doesn't have to be related to engineering. Obviously, the more engineering stuff, the better, but it's also, you know, having part-time jobs, volunteer experience that also tells employers things about you. Um, so list, you know, as many as possible. Remembering again that LinkedIn, you don't have a, a space limit. You're not limited to a page. Um, where I've told you guys many times, oh, excuse me, in the past that it is not okay to use I, me, my on a resume, like no first person language. On LinkedIn, it's fair game. You can Really, if you want, you could copy paste um, bullet points right from your resume to your LinkedIn. You could also do it more like a narrative, um, like talking a little bit more personally about yourself. Um, those things are absolutely fine. Pictures and links. So resumes are space limited and LinkedIn is not. You can add pictures, you can add videos. You know, are you a part of TFR and you're helping build a race car? Do you have pictures of that and videos of that? Like add them on there. Do you write a blog related to your industry? Add the link. Do you have a GitHub? Like add the link. It's an additional opportunity for you to show, you know, what you're about. Um, and again, remembering that resumes are space limited, but LinkedIn is not. Following LinkedIn influencers, and I'm just gonna mention this briefly, especially for international students, 
Um, Marcelo is somebody I met via LinkedIn. He works specifically with international students. He'll often post like really good advice for you all. Um, he'll post about career fairs that are specifically geared towards international students and some tangible information on the hiring process. Um, I imagine that there are other LinkedIn influencers out there like Marcelo, um, but I just wanted to mention that not only do you want to, you know, connect with people, you can connect with companies, um, but following um, influencers can sometimes uh, provide you with some good information. So tailoring your next connection and keeping in touch. So when you connect with people on LinkedIn who you do not know, which I absolutely encourage you to do within your industry, you don't wanna just hit connect. You wanna send them a note of some sort, introduce yourself. You know, especially when you're thinking, and again, I'm gonna talk about informational interviewing next, but when you are thinking about informational interviewing and, and trying to reach out to people in your industry who you don't know to get more information and to build your network, if you're just randomly connecting and then you don't reach out to those people, like what, what's the point kind of, right? Um, and also anytime I meet someone in like professional spaces. So for example, I went to a career technology conference at Temple a few years back and I met this woman, Casey, who worked at a school in New York and we had a really nice conversation and I wanted to keep that relationship going, like start, you know, building that relationship. So when I got home, like I connected with her on LinkedIn and I wrote her this message. Hi, Casey, it was so nice to meet you last week at the Career Technology Conference. Um, I look forward to running into you at events in the future, be well. Um, start you know, building that relationship. Whenever I see Casey, you know, I, I think a, a year ago or so, um, they went to a new university, I congratulated her um, on her new job. Just you know, trying to keep up with people, not just reaching out to people when you want something, but like building a relationship with them. Um, the second message here is somebody that I had an informational interview with. Uh, so I, I will tell that story now. So um, an informational interview is an opportunity for you to get information um, from someone who is, you know, doing perhaps what you want to do. So I'll give you the specific example. I was in school getting my master's degree to be a mental health counselor, and I realized fairly quickly that I didn't think that I wanted to do mental health counseling, but I liked counseling. And I took a career counseling class and had a good experience in that class. And the professor encouraged me to reach out to some people who are in the career counseling field um, for informational interview. So I posted to LinkedIn asking if anybody could connect me to some career counselors. And I was connected to um, a career counselor who worked in a private practice. Um, mostly working with women who were transitioning back into the workforce after um, having kids. And um, I also met with somebody from Temple who was a career counselor at Fox. And Doreen and I had this great conversation. Um, I really appreciated her insight and the information she gave me about like private practice career counseling. But I realized from that conversation that it wasn't for me. It wasn't the population I wanted to work with. The hours were a little bit wonky where you had to you know, be responding to people after six o'clock at night. It just wasn't the lifestyle that I imagined for myself. And that was really helpful for me to talk to her and figure that out because sometimes we have an idea of what we think a job would be like, but talking to someone who's actually doing it can be so powerful. Um, and then I spoke with someone from Temple uh, Fox Career Center, and I had a great conversation with him as well. And I definitely realized that what he did um, was much more in line with what I wanted to do in the future. So those conversations, those informational interviews were really valuable to me. Um, this was a message I got from Doreen when I posted that I got this position at the College of Engineering. Hi, Leslie, congratulations. Thanks so much for staying in touch. So few do and I really appreciate it. What are your hours would love to meet for coffee? So I stayed in touch with Doreen. After her and I met for that informational interview because it was in person, you know, I thanked her for her time. I reached back out a little while later to just check in, you know, starting to build that relationship. And you'll see she says, cause I copy pasted this from the message. So few do and I really appreciate it. So it is a way to stand out. Networking with people you don't know. So I just talked about that, right? Through informational interviewing. So it can be a really good way to expand your network beyond people you know. So like these two people 
who were strangers to me, um, who friends connected me to for these informational interviews, now they're part of my network. Um, it's a good way to learn information about how to be successful in your in industry. So I'll give you an example of this. I had a student about a year or so ago who really wanted to go into a hyper specific area in prosthetics, but he didn't really know like what would it take um, to work at a company that was doing that kind of work. So he searched for companies doing that, that he would be interested in working for. And he ended up reaching out to the CEOs of those companies via LinkedIn, just sending them a message. And I'm going to show you like a sample of, of what this message might look like. And he just asked if they would be willing to chat um, over the phone or via email about their experience. I think he ended up talking to two of them and they gave him this really great advice about going into manufacturing engineering um, to get to where he wanted to go, to get the experience that he would need. And it helped shape his career trajectory, right? And that's really powerful. Um, so that stuff is, is really helpful. It could lead to a future reference. You don't want to, like, I never would have gone to that person who was a career counselor at Temple before, a, you know, establishing a relationship, building a relationship and having a conversation with him and saying, hey, could you help me get a job at Temple? Like, that's not the way to approach this. But hey, maybe you have, you know, let's say SEPTA is your dream job and you meet with a project manager through um, LinkedIn, you connect with them for an informational interview and you build this good rapport with them. And then a year from now, when you're ready to apply for a full-time job at SEPTA, then you reach out to them and say, hey, do you have any tips for me for this application? And if you've built a good relationship with them, they're likely going to be happy to serve as a reference for you for that position. But it's about really building the foundation of that relationship to be able to get that type of support. And I believe I've given you some concrete examples of that here. Um, so for informational interviews, you do want to be prepared. If you're asking someone to take time out, out of their day to talk to you, you want to have questions going into it, right? You want to have a goal in mind. You want to be sure to exchange any additional contact information with them to stay in touch. Know your audience as best as you can, right? Like look at their LinkedIn, look to see if there's any, you know, information about them so that you can ask really hyper-focused questions. Know yourself, because chances are when you sit down with that person, they're going to say, or over the phone or whatever, hey, well, hey, why don't you start with telling me a little bit about yourself? And that's essentially an elevator pitch. That's the tell me about yourself in an interview question. Um, so being prepared and confident to talk about yourself is going to set you up for success. Remember to follow up. And I'll give you an example of this. Um, Somebody reached out to me for an informational interview uh, about career counseling, and I was super happy to help them, um, as I generally am in these situations. She was late for our conversation. She had the conversation while she was in the car, so it was really loud and hard to hear her. And then she never followed up to thank me for my time. She reached out to me months later asking me to serve as a reference for a job at Temple, and I simply wasn't going to do that. I mean, you were late to meet me. The conversation was in the car, which that one I really understand, like, you know, people don't have time, they're busy, that wouldn't have bothered me if she hadn't have been late and if she hadn't, if she had followed up and thanked me for my time. But why would I put my name on a reference for someone who didn't really show me that they're going to be professional. Um, I'm just not willing to do that and I don't think that I'm alone on that. So why should you have a LinkedIn? The pros, a positive online presence, especially again in today's social media world, like if your Twitter is filled with hot takes and retweets that you don't want companies to see, you should be keeping it private, especially when you're looking for a job. But LinkedIn is a place where if they Google you, like let that be the first thing that comes up. Um, recruiters can find you there. It's a place to build and stay connected to your network. It's a place to find jobs. Um, it's a place to stay connected to companies of interest. And then it's also an opportunity to sell yourself. I would say the downside is that it's another social media platform to join, but this one might get you paid. Um, and it can be time consuming, but that's up to you. You know, I'm on LinkedIn every day for work, um, but I'm not there for very long. Um, I just want to touch on um, some job search stuff real quick. If you guys are going to be, you know, searching over the holidays, one thing I want to note is that recruitment kind of dies over the holidays because people are taking their time off, they're with their families, um, they're not doing like interviews, it will pick back up again in January. If you are going to be using things like LinkedIn, Indeed, and Monster, recruiters might be contacting you, especially for full-time jobs. 
So a couple things of note, you do not pay these people, not up front and not ever. They get their money if the company hires you and the company pays them. You do not pay these people. You can use as many agencies as you want. You don't owe them anything. If you know you're you like the agency you're working with, but you're not really vibing with the recruiter, ask to switch recruiters. It's not a big deal. It happens all the time. You're in charge. Don't do anything uncomfortable. But that said, like typically a recruiter will have you come in for a pre-interview interview because they want to see are you going to get dressed nicely? Are you going to show up on time? Like they don't, they get paid if you get hired. So they don't want to send in a bad candidate to a company that they work with. But if, if they're asking you to do anything uncomfortable, please come see me, come see Mike. Um, Mike was a recruiter for many years in tech. So if you have like recruitment specific questions, I definitely recommend um, meeting with Mike. So yeah. Um, so when starting the search, do make sure that you're prepared, you know, it kills me when I get a senior that sits in front of me and they're just like, I just need a job. I don't care where. And I get that because we need money to survive in this world, but it's not very compelling when you sit in front of a company and they say, why do you want to work here? And you go, it's just because I need a job. Like that's real and I get it, but that's not compelling. And it's not going to make you come off as very confident. And furthermore, you guys are the ones with the skills, right? You're the ones who have busted your butts learning all of this stuff. And you have the technical skills to make these companies profitable. Um, so don't sell yourself short, have, have companies that you are interested in, have industries that you're targeting specifically. Um, having that master resume, as I mentioned earlier, is going to really help you to create, you know, one page resumes um, that are either industry specific or job specific. Be prepared to write a cover letter, but you shouldn't be writing a cover letter the way you write your resume. Like, you know, before you start searching for a job, you want your resume to be ready. A cover letter is hyper specific to the job you're applying for. If job A is asking for someone with AutoCAD skills, who's a strong communicator and likes to work on a team, and job B is asking for someone with MATLAB skills who likes to work independently, how are you writing the same cover letter to these two companies? You're not. Whereas your resume can say you have AutoCAD and MATLAB experience, your cover letter should focus on what the company's asking for. There are sample cover letters and a template on TU Portal under College of Engineering. Under advising, there's a career services section. There's a number of sample cover letters there for you guys. Be organized. So if I'm going into a job search, I would create an Excel sheet, which has like companies I'm going to apply to, date of application, you know, response from the company, follow up, something like that to keep yourself super organized. So I applied online. Now what? I get these questions all the time where students will come and they'll tell me, oh, I applied to 50 online applications and I've heard nothing. Well, on average, for every 50 you apply to, you hear from one. Those numbers, right, your engineers, those numbers are very bad. You need to try to find someone in HR to connect with. Sometimes there's an HR email, um, like septa at careers.com, um, but often there isn't. And you might have to try to find somebody on LinkedIn in HR, and I'm going to show you how to do that um, at the end of this presentation. But if if you do that, so let's say you hop on LinkedIn, you search the company, you find someone in HR, you would write this type of message. So you would hit connect and you would add a note. So something like, hi, Amanda, my name is Leslie Silva. I just applied for the project engineering internship position with SEPTA via your website. Be specific, give the position title. I'm passionate about public transportation and its impact on our local community. I would welcome the opportunity to discuss my qualifications with you. Send it off. You might never get a response, but you might, and they might go and pull your file out of that applicant tracking system, the abyss that is that system, and reach out to you because they see that you took initiative. So um, I'm going to stop my share here so I can take you all into LinkedIn um, to show you how you might be reaching out to a company. One moment here, my computer's a little slow. Okay. All right, so here is my LinkedIn. Let me make it bigger. Um, let's say SEPTA is the company that you wanna work for. So I'm gonna search SEPTA, you've already applied, so now you wanna follow up. 
you would search the company. You're going to go here where it says, see all the people who work here. Pardon me, my dog is getting a little antsy. I think the postal delivery person is here. Um, so we're going to search for, go, go through employees here, and we want to find somebody who's in HR. So it might say HR, it might say recruiter, talent acquisition, talent specialist. Those are all like HR buzzwords. So great, Adrian is a recruiter at SEPTA. I'm gonna hit connect and I'm not gonna just connect. I'm gonna add a note and I'm gonna write something like I showed you on that last slide. You know, something like, hi Adrian, my name is Leslie Silva. I'm a mechanical engineering student at Temple University, recently applied for blank position with your company, would welcome the opportunity to talk to you about my qualifications. Something short and sweet. Now I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna stop here. Um, I also want to plug uh, that I've created a YouTube playlist where I've added, uh, and I'm gonna keep adding these workshop videos um, so that you all have access to them. So if you Google, you know, Temple College of Engineering um, career workshop playlist, like something along those lines, I'm confident you can find it, but if you have any issues, please email me and I'll send you the link. Um, for example, there is a workshop on there that specifically focuses on following up with employers, how to do that um, after a career fair, after you interview with them, or just simply on a job application. So that stuff exists to help you all. Um, so yeah, I encourage you over the holiday break to put a little bit of time into professional development related things so that you can really hit the ground running um, come January and land the internships and jobs um, that you're hoping to land. So. Um, um, thank you everyone for um, being here today and I hope you all have a safe and healthy winter break. Take care.